Hi, and welcome to the Power BI Custom Visuals course. In this module, we're going to be looking at the Synoptic Panel. Now, the Synoptic Panel is really one of my favorite custom visuals that we've discussed so far. The idea here with the Synoptic Panel is that you can take any image that you have, uh, ideally some kind of a floor plan or a diagram of some kind, and you can then upload it to the Synoptic Panel website and the Synoptic Designer, and then you can actually outline different areas of your image that you want to place data on top of. So in the example on the right here, you can see it's a store plan, an image of a store plan, a diagram, and they've outlined, and you've been able to outline here, the different areas that you sell items. And you can tie in and see which areas of your store are getting the most activity and getting the most purchases. And so you can really do this with any type of image that you have. You, you take an image that you have, you upload it to the Synoptic Panel Designer website, which is run by the folks at OKViz. OK and once you do that, you can actually outline the different areas of your image and then use that image. It'll actually allow you to download an SVG file, which is kind of an, a mapping file. And you can use that inside of Power BI and tie it to data that you have. It's really cool visual. You're really going to like this one, I think. And uh, big kudos to the guys at OKViz okay who designed this one quite a while ago. But they also are the folks that run uh, SQLBI.com. So They've done a great job with this, and you'll see what you can do once you actually get an, a map file downloaded from their website. You can then use it to be able to fill in the different areas of different color saturations, or you can even use it almost like a KPI, where you can have different indicators or sta statuses that you want to be able to visualize on your image. So you can have all sorts of images. You can have a map. You can have a diagram, a flow chart, really anything you want. If it's an image and you can upload it and outline different areas that you want to apply data to it, this is a great visual to be able to do that. All right, so let's go ahead and walk through what do we need to do here. So what do we need to do? We need to go download the visual. This one has a little bit of an extra step because we're going to go upload an image to the Synoptic Designer website, and then we're going to download the map image that it provides to us and place it inside of Power BI and then overlay our data on top of our image. All right, so let's go ahead and start by downloading the custom visual. All right, so we're going to start by going to the custom visuals gallery. If you go to visuals.powerbi.com, that will redirect you to the site that we're looking at here now. And you're going to scroll down until you see the Synoptic Panel, which is the one right here. Now, you can, of course, select that and download it from the uh, gallery that you have, the Power BI Custom Visuals Gallery. You'll notice that it's also pointing out that you need to go to this other website. This is the, where you, the, you actually have the designer. This is where you go to place and upload your image so that you can place your data points on top of the image. So we're going to go to that website here as well. But I want to point out that you do not necessarily have to go to the Custom Visuals Gallery to be able to get this. You can also go to OKViz's OK website. If you go over to OKViz's OK website, which I already have open, you can then go navigate to find the different visuals that they have. They have quite a few out here, which are also in the Power BI Gallery. A part of the reason why they have a separate website that they explain is because this allows you to be able to get updates faster, whereas if, you have, if they had to put it through the Power BI Gallery, it takes a little bit longer to get those updates through. So from their website, you can also download it. It looks like they have the same version here that they have on the Power BI gallery, which is notated here. But if you download that and save it somewhere locally, that's your first step is to go ahead and download the Synoptic panel, save it somewhere locally so we can use it in a little bit. Now, really the next step before we go jump into the Power BI desktop is to go upload an image to the Synoptic Designer. Again, you can see this Synoptic Designer tool here on their website. And if you go to that, I already have it open right here. If you go to that, this will allow you to upload an image that you have and start to plot out areas on top of the map. And then you're going to export that map or that image with all those data points embedded into the file, and then you can start to place data on top of it. All right, so our first thing that we're going to do is I'm going to go bring in an image that I have, and I'm going to provide this image to you as well so that you can be able to play around with this. But it is similar to an example we did already once. This is actually an example where we're going to use a gas station. Okay, so I'm going to just drag and drop this image on here so you can kind of see it here. All right, so you can see this is what it looks like to be able to bring in an image into the Synoptic Designer. And what we're going to do is we're going to start to outline different areas of this image that we want to place data points on top of. Now, again, this is similar to an example we did earlier. We did an example a while back where we actually used the enhanced scatter plot to be able to place data points on top of this uh, diagram. In this case, what we're going to do is we're going to actually place whole outlines of areas that we would prefer to be able to recognize as data points on this image. So what we're going to do is you have a couple options down here on the bottom of what you can do. And uh, by the way, there's a gallery. I'll, I'll show you the gallery in a little bit. But the gallery has a bunch of pre-built images on it that already have data points identified. Just let me show you that real quick now. If you go underneath the gallery, you'll see there's things like human body, a clock, 
the generic store that we had earlier, the batting zone, an airport, an airplane, a uh, basketball court. There's even maps in here as well. So there's a lot of stuff in here that's already been made available to you. And if you select one of them and hit edit in designer, it actually has all these data points already plotted out for you. But in our case, we're going to actually use this image that we've uploaded and we're going to plot out some data points on top of this image ourselves. Now, there's a couple ways you can do this. One of the ways is you can actually use this little outlining tool here. You'll see in the bottom left, if I select this draw new area, you can then actually come in and select. I'm going to zoom in a little bit here so we can see it a little better. You can select the area that you want to outline. It's just a matter of clicking once. You don't have to hold it down or anything, but you can click once and then be able to outline the area of the map. Now, if you realize you make a mistake and you want to redo that, you can come over to here where you see the trash can on the right hand side and that'll allow you to delete that area and then you can just go back through and do it again. So I will go ahead and go back through, outline these different areas and we got our first area taken care of. Now we would go to our second area. By the way, you can also rename these areas. So if I wanted to rename this, I would call this something like gas pump one. Okay. And then when I click away from that, that's going to rename it here on the map as well or on the image. And then I'll go over here to my next portion that I want to outline, and I would select the areas here. Oop, looks like I got a little overzealous there. Let's delete that one and try one more time. So I'll go ahead and select the first area, the first corner, the second corner, third corner, and fourth corner. There we go. And you'll notice as I do that, this time it's actually named it similar to how I did the first time. So it's kind of a good idea to name it early on, because then it'll hold on and retain that name as you do other items here as well. All right, now let's go ahead and scroll down here a little bit. I'm creating some ones here on accident. Let me scroll down and uh, kind of move us around the screen here. There we go. And let's outline a couple other areas here. So I got uh, my third gas pump right here. And I know this part's a little tedious, but yes, you do have to kind of knock this part out before. And there is another tool in here that I'm gonna show you that makes it a little easier to select depending on the quality of your image. You'll see that here in just a moment as I finish this one. I'm going to show you there's another tool in here to help you do the selection as well. So this one, we've been using the select area button. That's this one here in the bottom left to draw a new area. You can also do this automatically discover as bitmap. And those bitmap areas, it's going to try and attempt to discover a section of your map or a section of your image. So for example, if I use that one on this number five pump, I can select it and you'll notice it automatically picks it up. Now it's going to be based on the quality of your image. If your image quality is a little lower, it might be more difficult for it to do that. But it is able to, in many cases, you'll see I have a gas pump six here as well that I can select. It is able to pick those two up without an issue. All right, so we got a couple of these done. Let's say I want to move up and I'm going to select one more area and I'm going to select this top area here where I have the actual service station. And I just to have one more area here that we're considering, I'll go ahead and select this one as well. All right, great. So instead of calling this gas pump seven, I want to name this something different. Let's call this the actual service station here. All right, so we've got all of our areas plotted out. Our next step then is to actually export this to Power BI. So you'll notice in the bottom left here, the bottom right, excuse me, that you can export this to Power BI. Let me zoom out here for a moment though so you can really see all the areas that we've now selected. And you can see that we have uh, really seven different areas selected, six gas pumps and a service station. You can kind of see that again, if I zoom out, you can see all uh, six gas pumps in the service station selected. So let's go ahead and select export to Power BI. And if you select that, what it's gonna do is it's gonna save this as an SVG file, which is one that's used oftentimes for mapping and embedding different data points in the map. So we're gonna go ahead and download that SVG file. It's gonna save that here locally for me, okay? And I'm gonna go ahead and open where I can find that at a later point. I'm not gonna bring that up on the screen here necessarily, but I have that saved off into a downloads folder. And so now that we have that, we're really done with the Sympatic Designer. You don't need to do anything else here. Uh, you probably may want to go visit the OK Viz Guys website. They have a bunch of other custom visuals that I would certainly recommend. But for what we're doing, we've gotten this part taken care of. So we can go switch back over now to the Power BI desktop. So I'm going to go over to the Power BI desktop. And we're going to start by importing some data so we can get the data ready for the Sympatic panel we're going to use. All right, so we're going to go up to the Get Data section here first. And we're going to bring some data in from Excel. The data that we're going to be bringing in here is going to be coming from a file very similar to what we did in the enhanced scatter plot previously in a previous example. But this one, what we're going to do is actually labeled part two. You'll see here it's called gas station part two. We had a previous one called gas station. This time we're using some similar data, so I just called it part two for this example. All right, so go ahead and select that file and hit open. Once you've opened that, we're going to select the pump usage spreadsheet inside of it and then hit load. You'll see it's a very simple data set here. So I'll hit load. 
Once you've loaded that data into the data model, you're now ready to bring in the custom visual, the sympathetic panel. So I'm going to go up here to where you see the ellipses to be able to import a custom visual and import our custom visual for this example, the sympathetic panel. Okay, so I'll go find the custom visual that you should have downloaded earlier. And yes, it did import successfully. And you should be able to see the sympathetic panel up here right here. There we go. Now, what I'd like to do is I'm going to place that sympathetic panel on the design surface, make it a little larger, okay? And then we're going to start to work with it and add some data to it and play around with it and see what we can do with this thing here. All right, so first things first, let's go ahead and add in the location, okay? And you'll notice when you add in the location is it does ask you to either select a map from the gallery or select a map that you might have already created. So this is from a local file that you would have already created, which is what we did earlier in this example. So I'll select a map. And I'm going to go find the map file that we created earlier. So I created one here. I'm going to go find it underneath this uh, folder I have here, but you will maybe have it in a different location. So I'll select this file, and you'll notice here that it brings in the example that we did earlier. And so you can see all those data points plotted out, showing here now inside of Power BI. Now they're all showing as black right now, but that's just because we haven't really fully engaged all the data that we need to bring into this. All right, so the first thing that we want to do then is to go ahead and bring in some of the metric data that we have, which is the traffic information. So I'm going to bring in traffic. Now you'll notice all the gas pumps have a color associated with them now, and that color indicates that it was able to actually find an associated value for what we mapped out inside of the sympathetic designer. So remember when we were naming each of these gas pump 1, gas pump 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6? When we named those, that actually mattered because it tied into the data set that we have here. You can see the location. You don't have to call it location, but we have gas pump 1 through 6 here. We don't have a data point for service station, and because we don't have a data point for service station, nothing is made visible here for the service station data point. Okay, so there's no data associated with it. You can even see that with a tooltip here. When I hover above gas pump 4, I can see that the traffic is at a level 5. When I look at service station, it doesn't have any data points associated with it, and that's what you're seeing here. All right, so what's our next step? Well, next what I'd like to do is show you how you can actually change some of these data points that you see here. So we have gas pump five, six, all the way up to one. So how do we change some of the colors and really customize this a little bit? So if you wanted to, you could customize the colors that are being used. Instead of using the traditional Power BI blue here, you can go underneath the format section and you can look underneath some of these different options that you have. For example, if you didn't like this black area that we have right now, that's uh, identifying as the unmatched areas. This is actually having any unmatched areas. You can turn this on. You can change the way that it's being visualized. So right now it's showing as just black because there is no value. But if I turn on this option here called Colorize, you'll notice that it's also matching the previous colors that we have on the screen. You can adjust any of the non-selected areas or non-matched areas. Maybe you want to select it as just gray just so it's kind of a uh, not included area. You can do something like that. So if you want to play around with the non-matched areas, areas where you don't have data, you can certainly do that by using this unmatched area part of the custom visual. You can also come down here where it says matched areas. And under matched areas, you, if you don't want to just use that standard blue, you can change it to a different color here. So I can change it to something like yellow if I wanted to. Or you can actually turn on this multiple colors. And if you turn on multiple colors, you'll see each one of them has a different color associated with them. And so that way, what you can do is you can actually do something like changing the saturation value. And adding a saturation value into it will actually shade these different colors to whatever value you would like to see them. So let me show you what I mean by that. If I go back over to the field well here, and you'll see there's a property in here called saturation values. If I drop, drop traffic in saturation values as well, you'll notice that it's now kind of a different shade for each of these values that I have. It's pump one being the highest possible value here of 60, pump three at 37, uh, pump two at 12. And so these almost look white, but they are shaded. And you can actually change, if you go back over to the format section, you can change the saturation levels to include or up this, maybe make this something like 100, and you'll notice that it actually shades it out a little bit lower. If you made it something like 40, you'll notice that it kind of bumps up the shading a little bit, and you can see more and more values. And you can play around with this. If you really wanted to do kind of a shading look and feel to this, you're going to do that and adjust it in the saturation level section here, the saturation state, I should say. All right, so that's kind of playing around with different saturation levels. The other thing that you can do with this that's really neat is you can also make it so that you can make this appear like a KPI. And so if you want to make this look like a KPI, what you would do is I would go back over to the field well, instead of looking at this with a saturation value, I could uh, kind of have a couple different options here for how I do this. One is you would need to put something in the state value. So the state value is really what you're using as an indicator for the KPI. And then you can make the state one from, and the state two from, and state two from, and the state two, two, two is uh, where you can actually make it dynamic what the KPI is based off of. 
So if you had some data points inside your data set to say, I want the KPI to be from this value to this value, then you can actually plot that in here where the, you see state one from and state one to. And in our case, I don't have any fields like that, but you can still use this by manually adjusting what the state levels are gonna be, what each of the thresholds for the KPI are gonna be. And so if you wanted to do something like that, you can go underneath the format paintbrush again, and you'll see state one, state two, state three here. And what you can do is you can adjust these. I can go into state one and I can say, I wanna manually adjust this and say everything from negative infinity to 20 is gonna show up as red. And you can see this is automatically adjusting my values. And everything from, let's say, 21 to 40 is going to be our state 2. Okay, and you can see the yellow start to plot inside of our design surface here. And for state 3, maybe I want it to be everything that is 41 to infinity or higher to be showing up as a state 3 value, which in our case here you can see is green, but of course you can change the colors here to a different value if you want. So it looks like the only one that we have that meets under those state 3 categories is pump one here. That one's very busy, whereas the other ones are kind of moderately busy and they fall underneath the state two section and state th uh, one section here as well. So that's kind of a neat way that you can use this as well as some kind of an indicator, almost like a KPI built into your image that you imported. A couple other things I'll highlight real quickly, you can add on labels. So if I add on the labels here, turn on labels, you'll notice that it puts a little number on top of that. It's kind of hard to see from here, but you can of course zoom in on this if you wanted to. So you can zoom in on that and see those numbers a little bit better. You can also come in here and if you wanted to, you can expand the labels and change what type of value the labels are being are using. So right now it's showing the number, the busyness, the traffic at those different pumps. But instead, if I wanted to, I can change the style here, which you're seeing in the bottom right of my screen, and you can change it to show the category. So I can see the names of the pumps here if I wanted to, or you can actually change it again and say, well, I want both. I want the category and the data value, and it's going to show me then the name of the pump and the metric that I'm placing on top of it. In this case, I'm going to switch that back to just the category. I just wanted to show you that's something you can do. Notice there's all kinds of different formatting you can do in here. You can increase the text size if you wanted to. You can play around with that a little bit. I just bumped that up a couple notches so you can see it. You can also change the position if you want it to appear on the top, the bottom, the middle. You can adjust where you want that to show here. I'm sorry, it's just the top left or the middle of where the data point is. So a, different, a couple of different areas you can play around with and adjust. You can also add a legend if you wanted to. It doesn't really make too much sense for my example here. Let me show you why. If I add a legend, you'll see the legend is added up in the top left here. Um, but the legend, if you look at the data, doesn't necessarily map up to what I have on the design surface now. You'll notice it has different colors for the pumps. Well, that's not really how I'm indicating things now. So the legend here really doesn't make sense. But note, you can add a legend. And if you wanted to, for my example, it may not make sense. It might make sense for yours to add the legend and put it in different positions. I can put it on the right-hand side. I can put it on the bottom if I wanted to. You have a lot of options as far as how you can see that legend. I'm going to go ahead and revert it back to normal. I don't really need a legend for my example. Mine's pretty straightforward. Mine's pretty obvious what we're looking at here. Now, a couple other things that we should talk about as far as how to interact with this. Let's say that you have multiple visuals on the design surface with the sympathetic panel. Let's say I add in something like the location and traffic as just a regular old table over here, and I increase the text size a little bit so you can see it much better. There we go. Now, the one thing I want to point out to you here is that sympathetic panels can interact with other visuals. They do allow things like cross-filtering. So if I selected something like uh, Gas Pump 5 here, you'll notice that it does filter down the other areas of my uh, report. You can multi-select as well. I can select uh, gas, gas Pump 5 and Gas Pump 6, for example, and you can see that it allows me to multi-select and it does interact with other visuals that I have here. If you want to deselect those, just select the uh, selection you already had again, and it should unselect those values for you. So the sympathetic panel is a really, really interesting visual. It's, like I said, one of my favorites. I think it's really a cool way to be able to take images that you have, all sorts of images, and be able to plot data on top of it. And you can really do with this with, this, with anything. Maybe if you just had a little workflow analysis that you were trying to do and you wanted to analyze some data on top of it, very, very nice way to be able to do that and place data on top of it and be able to visualize it in Power BI with other visuals that you may already have. So I hope you guys enjoyed this one. This is, again, one of my favorites. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And I look forward to showing you our next custom visual in our next module.